Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another Channel 781 News City Council debrief. Uh, our usual host, Josh, is away, so I will be your facilitator for the evening. I am joined by the always wonderful James Krakowicz. Hello, everyone. And so this week was a committee meeting uh, day at the Waltham City Council, and not that much happened. There are no worldly troubles in the world to solve. Uh, so I can see why nothing mo would be talked about. Um, but we did go through some committees. Uh, so we'll be talking a little bit about those, talk a little bit about dog parks, um, and then a little bit about reporting uh, of the committees. There's more on that. Um, and then with the time we have extra, we'll be going over some community events that are coming up, a plea to help us record ordinance and rules, um, and issues with scheduling. Um, so I'm going to chat a little bit about the economic and community development meeting. Um, I did record this meeting and put it on the uh, Waltham Data YouTube page. Um, and if you're interested in the city councilors' opinions on dogs, they talked for like almost an hour, especially Kathleen McMiniman, about just dogs, which I thought was just so funny. Um, and, but for uh, moving forward, there wasn't that much actually talked about. They did bring in um, a, a Catherine Cagle from the planning department uh, in and talk about where this is headed. Uh, just for a little background, uh, Councillor Paz, the Ward 9 City Councillor, is looking to pilot a dog park program in one of the three parks, McKenna, Nipper Mar, or one other one I'm forgetting. Um, and, uh, and so he's starting a conversation. He's used that many times. Um, and the other one was a chemistry park, by the way. Um, and so the planning department is talking about how, you know, they'll bring it in front of uh, the, the necessary boards uh, to pilot this kind of thing um, and that it was moving forward. Um, when pressed on the issue uh, on certain um, questions, uh, Councillor Paz reiterated that this was just a conversation starter. Um, he, John Paz has many different resolutions inside the city council that are these conversation starters. Um, again, it's hard to say because of how municipal politics work and how politics works in general, if he has an idea uh, for what these things are going to come to fruition on, uh, such as housing, food sovereignty, uh, municipal internet, um, dog parks. Uh, these are all resolutions that he has that I would love to see uh, something happen with, uh, but it's unclear if he has intention of that or if this is uh, just a way to talk about the issues. Um, and so it is moved, Doc Marks is moving forward. Again, if you want to hear Kathleen McMiniman talk about her dog for 15 minutes, I think, uh, you're welcome to look at that on, the, on YouTube. Um, and Kathy Ann Harris, interestingly enough, was talking about how she's also looking at piloting a dog park program in her ward, which is in Ward 8. But she did not bring in a resolution. She is just working directly with the mayor. So there's many different ways of getting things done in the uh, municipal government, especially in Waltham. Um, and so it's interesting to see uh, that occur like that. Um, I'm going to give it over to James to talk about the two committees that he uh, went to. So. Uh... The first one was license and franchises, and there, that had uh, mostly business as usual uh, with, with uh, dealer's license renewals and um, everything generally approved as, as expected. And that was about it for the meeting. Um, the other one was the uh, public works and public safety, and that had a little bit more going on. Um, mostly involving uh, discussion around paving of private ways and like some of the difficulties associated with getting that done. And there was uh, a brief appearance from uh, George Darcy and I think he had put in um, a request uh, to the mayor and one other person, I didn't, uh, it was, uh, 
someone from Public Works, I believe. I think probably the person in charge of Public Works was supposed to be there as well. And I think that got put out to another two weeks to talk about specifically this type of resurfacing private ways. And uh, part of the issue in particular this day was uh, the resurfacing um, at Silver Hill Lane. And one of the complications was specifically the price of this in being each uh, like in getting a private way done by the city, it's uh, I think a third funded by residents, and the way that that's divided up is by frontage. So the more of the road on your property, the more you're on the hook for paying, including corners and stuff like that. I thought that was it's uh, yeah, it's actually it's actually way harder than uh, than just that to get a private way. Um, done with this extra time. Let's talk a little bit about private ways. Um, so this was I, uh, I ran for city council last year, and I made it a part of my campaign. This is not a novel idea at all, and I'll get to that in a second. But to try and convert all of the private ways that want it, which would be I don't know, signature, signature gathering, I guess, um, into a public way. And a public way, the city every year decides which roads are going to get paved in what order. Um, private ways, they don't. Um, unless unless something catastrophic happens um and so for uh if your road is shit and it's on a private way to change to get that paid you have to get 80 percent i believe i might uh, it's been a little while since i've uh, said this speech before um uh 80 percent of the residents that are on that street to agree to pay, you said a third, I think I think it was 50%, but it might be a third, um, to pay the money to do that. Um, and, you know, that sounds easy, but to get a majority of people to agree to something across a whole street, which could be dozens of people, it's, it's almost impossible. And I really had only one person come up to me and was like, well, you know, they can just pay for it themselves if they want the improvement. And when I said, you know, it's kind of difficult to do that, they were like, oh, well, you know, anything is possible, blah, blah, blah. And that is true. It is possible, but it is incredibly difficult. Um, and you see that across all private ways. It's just very difficult to do. The most recent one actually was right next to where I live, uh, Noonan Road, I believe, Browns Avenue, uh, right next to Browns Avenue. Um, and uh that was the oh, first one in at least a couple of years that actually uh, made it through the process one of the things i think randy mentioned in this meeting specifically was that if the road is like dangerous like we'll give you we'll give you a flat tire type of thing uh the public works will come out and fix it mm -hmm. so yeah. but the, the issue is like the resurfacing the whole road and also, one of the things that was brought up too is that, like, uh, I guess the one of these roads needed um, run, like drainage, basically done, and that's also outside the scope of what the city will cover for this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because in Waltham, a lot of these private ways are just very old roads, sort of that have, are, are actually used way more than by not just the population that lives there and. Mm -hmm. In some cases, even like through commuter traffic, so mm. it it is a little it's a little odd to not have them getting maintained. However, in like other parts of the country, a lot of the times these private ways are just sort of set up as uh, part of a development or something that is sort of then attempted to like get pawned off on the city, where it's more of like a private driveway that's getting maintained or like you know a cul-de-sac or something, and like, that's a little bit less justifiable, but. Either way, I can see people why people would get annoyed at having massive potholes and no way to repair it. And anyway, there there is there is precedent for um, businesses coming in. Uh, every single special permit that ever comes in, they have to agree to do some kind of betterment in the area that they're uh, constructing. Um, and sometimes I've seen businesses agreeing to fix private ways that are they're they're like you know abutting. Um, and, uh, and I just mentioned it, uh, this isn't a novel idea of turning private ways into public ways. The city council has actually been trying to do this for a long time. Diane LeBlanc, um, an old city councilor uh, that uh, lost the mayoral race uh, just recently, um, or the last one, it's not very recently anymore. Um, that was, she was really heading that up 
Uh, and now that she's gone, no one is really taking up the mantle of doing that. Yeah, and this is one of those things where like, you know, the more roads you have to maintain, the more it's going to eat into like you know, city budgets and stuff. Like they already have to pick and choose which ones they're going to be maintaining anyways. So yeah. Um, There's our walkable city. If only. And... Um, switching over to Committee of the Whole, um, which is the start of the recorded meetings. Um, we mostly talk about the recording of the meetings. Um, so there was a, uh, a communication from the mayor looking to approve $300,000, I believe. Um, it's actually in two different uh, communications uh, to Waltham Community Access Channel, which is um, the local news station. I had originally thought that this wasn't about recording of the meetings because you know we give money to local access uh, for other reasons. Um, and who knows what the mayor is up to. Uh, but uh, the mayor was called in and uh, my good friend Joey LaCava in Ward 5 uh, asked, you know, what is this money for? And she said that uh, the city council for the past five or so years has been coming to the mayor looking to record more meetings. And so the mayor is just approving this money, which is actually $450,000 um, as just a way for local access and the city council to make sure that there is enough money to make this happen and for further projects uh, re relating to it. Um, reminder that the local access only asked for 70,000, I believe, uh, to upgrade their servers, but the mayor is simply using this money, um, which is already sitting in a fund uh, unused to uh, provide the necessary funds to do this kind of project and all of the things that are associated with it and anything future involved in it. There was a brief exchange with uh, between the mayor and uh, Councilor LaCava where she sort of explained that like, she seems a little tired of having to come in every time that they need to cable, get cable access money. And so mm -hmm. basically they she gave them access to the funds that are coming from like Verizon and whoever as like a thing that they are then empowered to put into like to use as a part of the budget. Uh, so that was like the, the 410 thousand something mm. the city council I think can then draw from to fill out whatever requests cable access needs without having to first ask the mayor for permission. Yeah, I'm kind of confused about actually how they're going to use that funds and who is accountable for those funds and if they need to ask permission to use those funds. But we'll get to that or maybe we won't. <laughs> and, we'll come up um, to finance or something. Like if yeah. We'll get through that. Yeah. I mean, is it a city council line item that they have to approve from committee and then the full council, or can local access just use the funds? I can't really tell. I mean, it, it, even that would be one less step than having to ask the mayor first to send a letter for them to then approve. Yeah. <laughs> so well, the thing is, that, it, is that the mayor actually has to sign off on every single thing that the city council does. Um, uh, and I thought it was interesting that Joey legitimately did not seem to know what the mayor was going to say when he asked what the money was for. And when she was like, this is for committees, he actually seemed even almost a little emotional. Uh, and then he had to like give like a speech about, you know, he's grateful uh, for this happening. Um, so it's kind of funny that even, even the counselors don't really know. And even Joey, who's, this has been his project for the past um, more than a year now, um, he doesn't even know that the mayor is cooperating with him until literally it's happening. Um, in fact, it was in committee, not even the full count, the full council uh, recommended it. And he had no idea what they were doing there until it got to committee right before a vote. Um, but I just want to reiterate, this is a, this is a, this is a victory. Um, we talked last debrief about how we were waiting to see if the mayor was going to approve that money. And now the mayor uh, is in support, and not only that, but using more money um, to fund this project. So I can't see anything going wrong besides local access, just putting their hands up about it. Maybe uh, logistically, it's tough to hire someone, but the city council is in approval, the mayor is uh, in approval, the money is there. Um, it does have to be approved next week, but it was a full uh, vote anyway in approval. Um, and so, I think it's going to happen. I think the city council is going to be more transparent. It's going to be more accountable. It's going to be more accessible. Um, and it means that me and James don't have to go there every time. 
but you can watch watch it from home. I still might show up every so often. No, yeah, no. I mean, I, I love forward. city council. I mean, those those conversations with counselors and important people, and you can, there's so many things you don't see um, from there. Um, I uh, some background. I went to every single city council meeting from 2017 to uh, start of 2018 to the start of 2020. Um, and I've basically gone to every single one ever since then, but I can't say that it was uh, unbroken. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely still gonna go even if um, they record them all. It's definitely a more fulfilling experience, um, uh, which is a good segue into our plea. Um, we've said this before, but um, me and James usually leave um, around the committee of the whole or right at the committee of the whole ends. There are still two committees after that which is finance and ordinance and rules, um, both of which are not recorded live. Um, they are recorded, but they're released after. Um, and so we, we, by the time we do this debrief, uh, the recording is not out there yet. So we, uh, again, would like to make a plea that if you are interested in doing this, um, you can help us by uh, going to those meetings and then just taking notes. Of course, you're not gonna understand it at first. I will be. I would be glad to sit with you on a couple of them just to give you some background, um, but uh, looking for someone that uh, doesn't go to bed at 10 p.m. like I do. Um, James, anything on that? This, uh, for me, like I'm not entirely clear on why the scheduling is the way it is, but it's a little uh, annoying because like they will often have the committee of the whole run for an indeterminate amount of time because they're going to be talking a lot. And then you don't know when the finance or ordinance and rules committees are then scheduled. So you're, it makes it difficult to you know, plan to show up or anything like that because it's just a moving target. And it, Yeah, and, and we said before, uh, ordinance and rules, I believe, I don't know, just my opinion, that is the most important committee. That is where all the special permits are talked about. That's where a lot of the uh, motions and um, and ordinances are talked about. So it's the most important meeting and I rarely go to it. This one was particularly egregious because they had an executive session in the middle mm -hmm. of the committee of the whole, mm -hmm. which then resumes and then adjourns to go to the other committees. So it's mm -hmm. just like, it, by the time you're doing that, you're talking about it being like, you know, past 10. Yeah. So yeah. this is a lot later. Yeah. So with some extra time here, we can chat about um, some community events we uh, have coming up um, that you should go to. Uh, I really like to use more of this time to talk more about community events. Um, we have May Day coming up, uh, International Workers uh, Day. Um, and there's a, a coalition of groups um, coming to the Waltham Common on May 1st, uh, sponsored by Grouches of Waltham, where you're listening to this from. Um, Brandeis Leptis Union, which are just some of the most radical, uh, brave students I've ever met in my entire life. Um, Waltham Food Not Bombs, uh, which I helped start and help lead, um, as well as James, who has been really helping us cook a lot, which is great. Um, and am I forgetting anyone that's uh, sponsoring this also, right now? Also Waltham DSA. Oh yes, the Waltham DSA, which is basically the person putting it on. I totally forgot about them. Um, they're, they're organizing it all uh, and putting it where, so we'll be gathering, there'll be music and food. And you know, well, if Boston does something like this, but I've always said that Waltham uh, deserves its own May Day thing. Um, and now the uh, people, not me, decided uh, that they were gonna put it all together. Um, and so I'm excited about that. Uh, so we'll be there on May 1st. I hope you join us in that gathering. in the afternoon. What's that? 1.30 in the afternoon. 1.30 on the Waltham Common. And Food Not Bombs will be having food there. Yeah, yeah. Food Not Bombs is doing our regular serve there. So, um, so that, this is uh, the same day that the Moody Street is opening for pedestrian traffic. Yes, so Moody Street is shutting down well. half of Moody Street uh, to cars. So it'll be only pedestrians, which is great. It's been, this will be the third year in a row uh, they're doing this. It's a great thing. I hate cars. Eliminate cars. Um, uh, Food Not Bombs uh, is going back outside on the Waltham Commons. We're going to be serving uh, on Sundays from one to three. So if you'd like to come eat some vegan food with us, we give away food that's otherwise going to go to waste um, to anyone that needs it. Mostly people uh, that don't have a home, um, uh, but we give out food, resources, uh, literature. It's a good time. Make sure to come hang out with us. 
um, June 4th, I believe this is the first public acknowledgement of this uh, event, um, but um, Pride, uh, we did the first official uh, Waltham Pride last year, um, which I had a great honor of helping organize. Um, we're doing it again this year, except this year we're doing it on the common. Um, and so it'll be much more public. It's gonna be much more in public view. Um, it's gonna be bigger, uh, longer. Um, so that'll be on June 4th, um, a week before Boston Pride. And so we hope you can attend to that. I believe that it is at noon, but um, we'll plug in a flyer uh, when, when it happens. Okay, and I think that's everything. Um, like I said, if you wanna join us in this plea, uh, if you would like to join us in this action, please uh, reach out to us about attending ordinance and rules or finance. Would love to work on that with you. Also, if you ever wanna hear us talk about anything Waltham specific, um, happy to chat. We, I, we, uh, amongst all of us, we have a plethora of information about Waltham, how it works, uh, the players, um, and how things are going to go. Uh, we are very good at guessing that. Um, so uh, we can reach out about any Waltham related things. We'd love to chat about them. Uh, and besides that, um, thank you so much for listening. Adios. Bye, everyone. <laughs>